Hello everyone, welcome back. So, now we're talking about strains. And once again, I'm going to be mentioning fibers. I'm not talking about wood here, I'm talking about any beam. We're just looking at like different sections, like this little top section, and then the little bottom section. They're going to be having different experiences. Okay, so before bending, all the fibers are the same length. Between HH and KK. HH and KK being the little section I've cut out here. However, after bending, the upper portion becomes shorter and the bottom portion becomes longer. Now, the plane between this, this one right here, even though it bends, it's still the same length. And that is referred to as the neutral surface. It's the point where we have no change, no strain, which is going to be important. Now, when subjected to pure bending, the beam forms a beautiful circular arc. Um, and there's going to be some center of that arc, which is referred to as the center of curvature, which is helpful for a lot of our equations. Because if we look at this value right here, we can also use this radius to tell how much everything has bent. What is the length of these different sides compared to how it was originally? So let's use this center of curvature, this rays of curvature, to determine a strain relation by looking at this fiber above the neutral surface. So the segment has an initial length of delta x. And after bending, it now has a length of delta x prime. Taking the limit, we can then calculate the strain, which is like, OK, there we go. Beautiful. It's done. Um, however, this is not useful at all, so we need to put in terms of something we can actually look at. Um, so let's try to do that. Let's use our radius of curvature here and everything else to see what's going on with this. Okay, so as we had last time, so let's put in terms of our radius of curvature, and that's a little bit better. So we know whatever our angle is right here, okay, our radius minus the distance y from the neutral axis. This is looking a little bit better. However, how are we going to find the radius of curvature? Or this angle right here? You know, what is it going to be? It's still not super helpful. Okay, we can simplify that. You can see that we can cancel out the angle for all this. But we still have this radius of curvature, and that's not necessarily going to be the most helpful detail. So, this equation would be valid for any material of any type, both elastic and inelastic, because it's a strain equation. It's nice and simple. Um, and if you want to look at sign conventions, it says that radius of curvature will be positive um, for compression and negative for tension. That makes sense, because our strain should be positive for tension, and therefore the only way to make this positive is going to have a negative radius of curvature. Now, if we want to, we can also describe how sharply a beam is bent through the curvature, kappa. Um, and it is simply the inverse of the radius. And it makes our equation look a little bit nicer here. And it always has the same sign as our radius of curvature. So it's positive if the center of curvature is above the axis, and negative if the center of curvature is below the axis. Okay. Now, for pure bending, the longitudinal strain varies in proportion to the distance from the neutral plane. And we can also use our nice Hooke's Law to calculate our normal stresses. Now, here's a little detail. Whenever you look at a stress strain diagram, it's usually identical in compression or in tension in the elastic regime. Not always the case for the inelastic regime, but usually there's a negligible difference. Um, however, the point where they fail is usually very different depending on whether you're going into compression or tension. So for this book, for this chapter, just assume that compression and tension have the same stress strain relationship. Okay, so we're going to use our stress equation right here, and we're going to put all that we have into our strain equation. So we have either our stress is going to be our modulus elasticity over the rates of curvature times our distance from the neutral axis, or we're going to put in terms of the um, curvature.
curvature. But you know, you're looking at this, and once again, the razor curvature is still there. So we're going to need to determine a better method of looking at this. Okay, we're going to need to determine a better method of looking at this because we know where these stresses come from. These stresses come from that bending moment. That deflection comes from the bending moment. And so it would be better if we could determine a relationship that connects that bending moment to our stress. So what we've been saying all along is how do we calculate the rates of curvature? How do we find the neutral surface? Well, let's look at these things. Um, actually, it's getting kind of long already for this video. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to answer these questions next time. So thank you for listening. I hope this helps you. And remember that just because we have a nice little equation right here doesn't mean there's an easier way to write it. We're going to find that easier way next time. So have a wonderful day. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.